Dr. Singh put on his best smile as his newest patient shifted in her chair. Young Wendy Harper, a first grader whose parents had a growing concern about their daughter having intense nightmares. Said parents were sitting in chairs in the back of the room, giving enough space to where, hopefully, Wendy would be comfortable and honest about feeling her parents looking over her shoulder while they were hopefully comfortable in giving her space, but still be able to see her and get to her quickly if they felt the need. Hello, Wendy. It's nice to meet you. I'm Dr. Singh, he said, holding out his hand. Dr. Singh, that's a pretty name, Wendy replied, shaking his hand. But I don't feel sick. Why am I at the doctor's office? I'm a different kind of doctor, Singh replied with a patient smile. Instead of coughs and colds, I'm the kind of doctor who listens to people's problems to help them find an answer. Your parents brought you here because they said you've been having trouble sleeping at night. I want to help you with that. How? Wendy asked. Well, for starters, I'd like permission to record our talking. That way, I can double check what we discuss after you leave for the day. Is that okay with you? Wendy nodded and the psychologist pressed the record button on the small camera at the corner of his desk. So, tell me about your nightmares. Can you remember them? Dr. Singh asked. Wendy nodded. Happened every night for days, Wendy replied with emphasis. Dr. Singh nodded in confirmation. It's the boogeyman. It's gotta be, she said. Really? Have you seen him? Dr. Singh asked. Well, no. Not seen him, seen him. Wendy looked crestfallen. Tell me what you did see. Let's start there, Dr. Singh encouraged. Red light. A bright red light coming from my closet door. That's how I know it's him. Doesn't the boogeyman come in through the closet? Wendy asked. That's what they say in most of the stories, Dr. Singh replied. You don't believe me either, do you? Wendy accused. Just like mom and dad. I didn't say that. If a lot of people tell the same story, well, there might be something to it, the psychologist replied. But it's not a story or a dream. He's real, and... Wendy looked shaken, tears starting to come to her eyes. And, Dr. Singh prompted, he wants to eat me, she whispered. Did he say that, Dr. Singh asked? No, he didn't say anything, Wendy replied. I just know, you know? The boogeyman didn't say anything? Did he roar or growl like a big animal, Dr. Singh continued? No, he's completely quiet. Doesn't talk, doesn't growl. No sound, just the red light, Wendy replied. Have you tried opening the closet to check, Dr. Singh asked. Wendy shook her head no vigorously. If the boogeyman was in your closet and wanted to eat you, would you open it, she asked smartly. No, I suppose I wouldn't. I'd want to get out of there as fast as possible, Dr. Singh said. Mom and Dad let me stay in their room the first night it happened. But not after that, she added. They say it's not good for me to sleep with them every night. I see. Dr. Singh made a mental note to discuss that with Wendy's parents when he was done interviewing her. Is it just the red light every night? Has anything changed from day to day? You said there's no sound, but is there anything else with it? Well, last night it changed. I thought the red light went away, but it just got quieter, Wendy replied, searching for the white word and not quite finding it. Then the door opened, and it wasn't one big red light, but two small ones. It's his eyes. They were watching me. Do you still think he wants to eat you, Dr. Singh asked? Positive. Don't know why he hasn't. It's like he's waiting for something first. Don't you call out for your parents, Dr. Singh asked? Yeah, but when they show up, he's already gone. Dad checks the closet, and there's nothing there. He keeps saying it's only a dream and I'll be okay, but I don't feel okay. Dr. C noticed Wendy's parents in the back of the room tense, and he held up a gentle hand, gesturing for them to keep their seats and let their daughter continue. You said when your parents check on you, the boogeyman is already gone. Have you tried anything to get rid of him yourself? Dr. Singh asked. No, I don't know how, Wendy said sadly. Have you ever read Peter Pan? Dr. Singh asked. 
It's my favorite story. It has my name in it. Wendy's face lit up with a grin. Well, if you remember in that story, Peter said that whenever someone says they don't believe in fairies, a fairy drops dead somewhere in the world. I think the boogeyman might be a bad fairy, and the best way to get rid of him is to tell him you don't believe in him. But I know he's real. I've seen it. How can I pretend he's not real, Wendy's asked. The important thing, Wendy, is to make him believe that you don't believe in him, Dr. Singh suggested. You're trying to trick him, and when it works, he won't bother you anymore. Okay, I'll try, Wendy said, unsure. By the way, do you know who told you about the boogeyman in the first place? Who told the stories? Was it your parents? Someone in your school trying to tease you? Dr. Singh asked. No, just read about him in the library. My parents would never be mean to me. I just wish they'd believe me is all. I could talk to them about that in a few. But how about your classmates? Has anyone bullied you? Or maybe your teacher has said or done something you didn't like, the psychologist suggested. Wendy shook her head no. I like school and everyone in it. I'm one of the best in my class. Or I was until the boogeyman started haunting my closet. I don't get enough sleep, and one time I fell asleep in class and got Mrs. Parker, that's my teacher, upset. Not mad upset, more confused upset. I've never done it before. Sorry. Well, I think I'll write Mrs. Parker a note explaining that you've been having trouble sleeping at home, that it's not your fault, and we're going to work on it. Okay? Dr. Steen smiled. Wendy gave a brave smile for the first time since entering the psychologist's office. One other thing. This may sound silly, but I have to know. Did you hurt yourself recently? At home or while playing at school or anywhere else? Did you hit your head really hard, possibly? Dr. Singh asked. Nope, I'm pretty careful when I go play at recess. I even have to tell some of the others not to be so dangerous sometimes, she said, wagging her finger as if she were scolding a classmate in front of her. Good girl. This will be enough for now, Wendy. I'll be needing a few minutes to talk to your parents. We have a small library that also has some nice toys in it if you want to read or play for a few minutes in the room next door. He pointed through a large window where a room with said items were in wait. Go ahead and have some fun, he smiled as Wendy as he led her to the door to the playroom. Once Wendy started to browse through the small collection of books and chose one to sit with and read, Dr. Zine turned his attention to the girl's parents. Thank you for waiting patiently, Mr. and Mrs. Harper. It was important that Wendy be allowed to tell me what was going on in her own words. Do you think you can help her? Mrs. Harper asked, tears welling up in her eyes as she looked at the window at her daughter. So far, I'm confident she can be helped, but it will take some time, Dr. Singh replied. So far, what she's told me has confirmed what you've already told me about her school life. She didn't say anything about being bullied by other students or her teacher acting inappropriately in any way. Nor is there any physical trauma. She's not just a good student. She gets along great with her classmates, Mr. Harper confirmed. I just wish I knew why this all started. Dr. C nodded. It's common for everyone, especially children, to have nightmares occasionally. Having vid vid ones on a nightly basis is cause for concern, however, especially when it interferes with daily life like it has for Wendy. As for how it started, so far I'm not sure. Usually something like this is triggered by some kind of trauma. She seems to have a healthy school life at the very least, so I have to ask about her family life. Any recent losses in the family, the psychologist asked. No, thankfully, we haven't had a loss in the family since she was born, Mrs. Harper replied. Wonderful to hear that. Now I'm about to get very personal, and I apologize in advance, but is everything going okay between the two of you? Wendy has said you're wonderful parents to her, and I believe that, but how parents relate to each other is very impactful to a young child, whether negatively or positively. Even if you try to hide any problems from her, well, children are often more perceptive than adults would believe. She may pick up on any tension between the two of you. The two worried parents looked at each other, then back at the doctor. We haven't had any major problems either. No loud arguments or anything, even in private, that she might have overheard, Mrs. Harper assured the doctor. We've even planned a romantic weekend later this month, but if Wendy is having these issues, should we cancel it, Mr. Harper asked. Dr. Singh nodded sadly. 
until we find the reason behind Wendy's night terrors, I don't think it's a good idea for you to be too far away from her when she's not at school. I'm sorry for the personal questions, but between what you've told me and what she's told me, I'm trying to eliminate the more obvious potential causes of trauma right away. I didn't expect the answer to come so easily, but we have to be thorough. What can we do, Dr. and Mr. Harper asks. As silly as this sounds, believe her when she comes to you so frightened, even if it's something like the boogeyman. You want us to pretend to believe in something that doesn't exist? Mrs. Harper asks, confused. Yes, for Wendy's sake. She told me you let her sleep in your room the first night it happened, but not after that. Even imagined, Wendy is absolutely terrified of this threat, and to have the two people who she trusts the most in the world not believe her will only compound her fears. It's also setting a precedent. If you don't react as if this is for real for you as it is for her, then when she is older and in danger from a real threat, she may not come to you for help when she really needs to. If she needs to be with you to relax and get the sleep she needs while we figure this out, let her do so. It's better than having insomnia from feeling scared and alone. Anything else we can try, Mr. Harper asked? Yes. I suggested to her that one day she can deal with her boogeyman is to tell it that she doesn't believe in it. I think you should go over this with her multiple times each night before she tries to sleep. It may not work at first, but give it time. After a few days, you may see some progress. I know you're worried for Wendy, but these things can't be rushed. Call me in a week to let me know how things are going, and we can progress from there. Okay, then. Thank you, Dr. and Mrs. Harper said, shaking the psychologist's hand, followed by Mr. Harper. They let Wendy finish the book she was reading before taking her home for the day, and hopefully to a more peaceful night. Mr. Harper tucked his little girl into bed. Wendy looked at her father, worry etched in her face. What if he comes back tonight, she asked. Well, he responded. Remember what Dr. Zane told you to say to make him go away. There's no such thing as the boogeyman, right? Wendy replied unsure. That's my girl. He can't hurt you if you tell him you don't believe in him. Monsters only hurt you if you believe in them, so you can make them go away if you stop. Okay, if you think that'll work, she replied, looking downwards. Her father tilted her chin up so she could see his encouraging smile. Hey now, it won't work if you're not confident. Tell you what, let's practice. He pointed to her closet door. Go ahead and say it to the door. Maybe you can get rid of it now before it even comes. There's no such thing as the boogeyman, she said softly. I don't think he heard you. Try again. There's no such thing as the boogeyman, she said in her normal voice. Okay, better. Try one more time. Loudly this time. Make sure he hears you. There's no such thing as the boogeyman, she said it at her door. That's more like it, Mr. Harper grinned and ruffled the top of Wendy's hair. He walked over to the closet and opened it up and peered inside. I think it worked. He opened it up all the way to show her there was nothing inside except for clothes and toys, some scattered across the floor. No such thing as the boogeyman. He's gone. And if you think he's coming back, just keep saying it. Okay, Daddy. Thank you. After nudging the toys that were strewn on the floor near the closet door, Wendy's father had closed it all the way. You can thank me by cleaning up a bit around here this weekend. Don't want anyone to trip, do we? No, Daddy. One more idea. If you get scared and your shouting isn't working, try to pinch yourself. It may work too, Mr. Harper suggested before walking over and kissing Wendy on the top of her head. Try to have a good night. I know things have been tough lately, but they'll get better. I love you, sweetheart. I love you too, Daddy. Good night, she said with a yawn. Mr. Harper smiled and left his daughter's room, leaving the door open and cracked to let the light from the hallway in and so he and his wife could hear if she needed anything. How'd it go? Mrs. Harper asked when Mr. Harper went downstairs to the living room to join her. I think it went rather well. I told her to be more assertive, aggressive even, telling the boogeyman that he doesn't exist and he can't hurt her. Do you think that will work? Her nightmares have been pretty bad lately. He shrugged. It worked for me when I was her age. 
Mrs. Harper smiled. My hero. Scared the boogeyman away from his closet at such a young age, she teased, grabbing his hand and pulling him to the couch. Did you ever have nightmares like that? Did you believe in him as a kid? Nope. Never did. Guess I was fortunate he didn't pick on me. She put her arm around her husband. Well, weren't you the lucky one, he grinned. Yes, I was. And I know that look. Only thing you're getting tonight is kisses and cuddles as we watch movies, Mrs. Harper said firmly. Don't want to risk waking Wendy up, or worse, her interrupting things. Okay, okay, you win. Let's pick our movies for the night, Mr. Harper said, calling up their favorite streaming services. Wendy quietly got up from her bed and snuck into the bathroom to get a small cup of water. After finishing it and placing the cup back on the sink, she returned to her bedroom and crawled into bed. Looking straight ahead at the closet door, she saw the eerie red light glowing from the crack around the frame. Wendy gasped and pulled her sheet up to her neck and closed her eyes. There's no such thing as the boogeyman, she called out. The door slowly started to creak open. There's no such thing as the boogeyman, she said it at her closet door once again. The red light seemed to dim. It's working, Wendy whispered to herself. There's no such thing as the boogeyman, she said more assertively. This time, the red light seemed to go away completely. I did it, she smiled to herself. The door then flung open, causing her to gasp as the red light hadn't disappeared, just shrunk down to two smaller, brighter orbs as if they were eyes staring at her. They were in the center of an otherwise featureless gray head. There's no such thing as the boogeyman, Wendy shouted louder at the door and pulled the bedsheet over her face. However, the glow from the red eyes continued to shine through the covers and focused on her. Wendy's breathing intensified, realizing that things were happening exactly as she told Dr. Singer earlier. There's no such thing as the boogeyman, she tried to shout, but it came out as a harsh whisper. There's no such thing as the boogeyman. There's no such thing as the boogeyman. Instead of disappearing, she noticed that the red light seemed to be moving closer to her. Wendy decided to try what her father suggested and pinched herself hard on the cheek. Even though she knew this wasn't a nightmare, even though her parents didn't believe her, Wendy was willing to try anything to get the boogeyman to go away. She felt the bed shift. That's when she knew. It was on the bed and she felt it crawling towards her. Shaking all over now, Wendy slowly peeled the bed sheet off the top of her face and saw it staring back at her with its bright glowing red eyes. It had a roughly human-shaped body that had gray, moist skin resembling wet clay. And like clay, the face was shaping itself before Wendy's eyes until it looked like her face. There's no such thing as the boogeyman. It shouted at her with her voice, licking its lips hungrily. Mrs. Harper and Mr. Harper were halfway through the second movie of their evening when they heard the blood-curdling scream coming from their daughter's room. They rushed upstairs quickly to check on her, threw open the door, and saw Wendy trembling on her bed. Mrs. Harper rushed in to wrap her arms around her little girl, rubbing her back. It's okay, it's okay, we're here, you're safe, she said soothingly as she kissed the top of her daughter's hair. It was so scary, Wendy cried. I thought he was going to eat me. No one's going to eat you. Not as long as we're here, Mr. Harper tried to reassure his daughter. I tried. I tried to tell him what you told me to do, but it didn't work, Wendy hiccuped. Hey, Mr. Harper gave a small smile and headed over to his daughter to hug her as well. It may take more than one night, but you are so brave for trying. We'll keep doing it until it works. We love you, Wendy, and we're in this together. Can, can I sleep with you tonight, Wendy asked. Sure, sweetie, Mrs. Harper replied. I'll get your pillows. Dear, can you carry her? Of course, Mr. Harper smiled and picked her up. Wendy wrapped her arms around him and rested her head on his shoulder, facing behind him. Mrs. Harper left first, carrying her daughter's pillows. As Mr. Harper went to follow, Wendy poked him on the shoulder. Closet, she said. He turned around and saw on the, the open door. Close it, please. I'm still scared. Sure. He moved to close the closet door before exiting his daughter's room. I could have sworn I already closed it, he yawned. Must be more tired than I thought. Mr. Harper heard Wendy hiccup a gently patted her on the back as they walked down the hall, failing to notice the brief red glow coming from his daughter's eyes. <laughs>